Now let's do some extraction with data frames in R. Most of the time, if you're doing real data analysis, you're working with a data frame. <clears throat> so let's check out one of the data frames that comes on every R installation. It's called Iris. You should all have it. You don't have to do anything to load it. You can just print the whole thing if you like. Or what might be more useful is just to look at the structure of this data frame. So here we can see that we've got 150 observations of five variables. So that's 150 rows, five columns. And here are those columns and their types. So this first column is named sepal.length. It's numeric and it has a bunch of sepal lengths for different iris flowers. Then we've got width, length for petals, width for petals, and then species, which is a factor. It has three levels. So we have three different species and it begins to print those levels here. We're going to talk a little bit more about factors later, but for now, just realize that it's a special way to store character data in R and have those character data be associated with some number. So for instance, we've got three levels. There's Virginica, Cetosa, Versicolor, and each one of those has a number, one, two, or three, associated with it, which makes it easy to sort of convert between character or numeric if you need to do that. So let's say that I want to get maybe the first row out of this data frame. We can use what we already know about extraction to do that. So just like extracting out of a matrix, if I just type in a one for the first row, a comma, and then don't specify any particular column, I'm going to get all of those columns out. So this is just the first row of our data frame. Now maybe we want the first 10 rows. And I can type in 1 through 10 and get the first 10 rows. There are two more ways to extract from data frames that can be pretty useful. Let's say I want to extract just one of these columns out. Well, you guys know that I could type in this, not specifying a row, just give me the first column. But sometimes you want to refer to columns by name. So for instance, if I want this first column, I could also type in iris dollar sign and then the name of whatever column I'm interested in. So maybe I want sepal length. If I execute this, I'll get exactly the same result as it, when I specified it with a number. There's one more way to extract from data frames that can be useful. So this is good for extracting just one column, but maybe I want all of my sepal data, so both length and width. Well, I could also type in iris and then square brackets and instead of typing the row, comma, column that I'm interested in, I can give it a vector of names. So I'll use this combine function, and I want sepal length and sepal width. And that'll give me those two columns back. All of these methods can be used with relational operators as well. So let's say I want to expand upon this last method but I only want these data for one of my species. So maybe we're only interested in this species, Cetosa. I could expand this expression. I'm still going to have the same columns, but I only want particular rows. So what I could do is say iris dollar sign species equals equals Cetosa. So take a look at this whole expression. Here's where I specify the rows. Here's where I get the columns. And if I execute that, then I only get the data for that species. <laughs>